Once you've mastered the uh, controls of the car and uh, learned how to use the MSPSL routine effectively, you're then ready to learn a little bit more about how we interact with the road users. So you'll need to learn how to make judgments uh, regarding oncoming traffic in narrow gaps, for instance, uh, typically what we call meeting situations. Uh, it's important to understand the priorities in these situations as well. Uh, you also need to learn how to make judgments of oncoming traffic when you're turning right into side roads for instance and you'll need to develop your anticipation and awareness skills. So what I'd like to do is to go for a short drive and to demonstrate some of the scenarios that you're likely to encounter whilst you're out driving. So we're about to move off uh, now and as we can see uh, straight away uh, we've got uh, what we call a meeting situation so here there are vehicles parked on both sides which means basically there are no priorities um, but there's no oncoming traffic either so it's perfectly safe for me to move off uh, and go into that situation. Now I'm mindful uh, at the moment that it's a, a residential area so I'm likely to encounter pedestrians, uh, people uh, perhaps crossing the road. There's a school nearby as well, which happens to be a little bit of local knowledge, so I can anticipate any kids that might be nearby. So I'm driving at an appropriate speed for that. So I'll be able to stop if somebody, for instance, stepped out uh, from behind these parked vehicles. Now, I'm gonna to prepare to hold back for this red car that's coming the other way. And if you look at the sign, you'll see that in this situation, those oncoming vehicles have the priority. So I've got to wait here behind this giveaway line uh, and wait for the oncoming traffic. I'm also waiting for the next one, which seems to be a little bit further ahead. But if I were to move forward now and meet him just in that narrow gap. So best for me to wait here and then I can move off safely once he's gone through. Okay, so now I'm looking well ahead. I can see that there's another uh, meeting situation coming up. In this particular case, I've got the priority. The sign's telling me that. But if I check the mirrors and just slow back a little bit here, that allows these other vehicles to get through and for me to go through afterwards without having to uh, slow down too much. So it's all about timing. Again, another uh, meeting situation coming up. And again, I've got the priority. I can see at this point that there's no oncoming traffic, so it should be safe for me to continue. I'll still need to slow down to negotiate uh, the hazard. And that's what this traffic cam is about, is to keep the traffic nice and slow, keep everybody safe. So no faster than 15 miles an hour going through that little uh, chicane there. As I approach the mini roundabout, slowing down again, checking all round. We normally give way to traffic from the right, but we also check the roads on the left as well, and ahead in case someone else makes a mistake. I'm keeping it nice and slow, just about 10 miles an hour as I meet this white car coming the other way. Reasonably wide at that point because the cars are parked in the lay just as they are further ahead, so I should be able to get through with any oncoming traffic. Probably have to be a little bit more cautious uh, if there are any bigger vehicles like lorries or buses. Plenty of room to get by with the van here. We're coming towards the junction now, we can see that from the warning sign just up ahead. I'm going to turn right at that junction. And as I come towards the junction, I'm checking out uh, the traffic coming from the right because it's a nice open junction. It looks as if I'm going to have to stop. There's a few vehicles coming down from that side. Uh, I've also checked to the left already. It's safe for me now to go into the middle section, which I'm doing now. And I can carry it straight on around the corner. The red van's waiting. He's not attempting to go across in front of me. So now I'm going to make a right turn, just a bit further ahead. So I'm planning for that now, using the MSBSL in good time. Two things I'm looking for in particular here. I'm looking at the oncoming traffic to try and judge a gap there. Well, I should be okay just after the red car, but then as we look a bit further ahead, we've got those other vehicles. So I don't think I'm going to be able to time it to be able to get through without stopping this time. As I approach the junction, I'm also looking into the side road. Safe for me to go after the four-wheel drive. 
So look into the side road for any pedestrian activity. Somebody could be crossing the road, it could be parked vehicles just round the bend as well. And I can see now again there's another meeting situation coming up ahead. I've got to give way to the oncoming traffic. So I'm looking well ahead, can't see any oncoming traffic so it's safe for me to continue. Mini roundabout coming up again, so I'm going to slow the car down. Uh, and I'm going to give way to the traffic from the right, but I'm also checking the road ahead and the road to the left. So at the moment it's safe for me to continue. Now the road's a little bit narrow because of these parked vehicles on the right, but uh, I'm able to get through before the oncoming traffic gets uh, towards me. Another mini roundabout coming up, so again I'm checking out the oncoming traffic, looking into the road on the left as well. Keep him on the motorbike because he might just come round the roundabout. I don't think he's going to do. No, he's going ahead, so I'm safe to continue. And another meeting situation coming up ahead. Again, I've got to give way to the oncoming traffic, so I'm looking well ahead. It seemed to be clear at the minute, so I'm planning to go through without stopping. Need to slow down to about 15 miles an hour or so to negotiate the hazard, though. And again another mini roundabout. So important thing uh, as we uh, drive around these sort of areas where it's residential is to make sure that we're driving at a speed where it's safe for us to, uh, or where, sorry, where we'd be able to stop if we needed to. Slowing the car down here because this, this black car that's parked on the bench is a little bit awkward. But I can see it's clear, uh, no oncoming traffic. There's a bend up ahead, and there could be anything around that bend. It could be somebody crossing the road, or it could be a parked vehicle, or something like that. So what I'm doing now is just checking the mirrors, and slowing the car down a little bit in anticipation of any problems that might be around there. So I can always stop within the distance that I can see to be clear. I'm going to turn left at this T-junction. So for me to continue. Got a vehicle parked on the left here in a slightly restricted view, so I'm going cautiously into this situation. It looks like it's going to be clear for me to uh, continue. If there'd been any oncoming traffic there, I would have had to give way and hold back. So it's a decision that I have to make as to whether I could get through or whether I need to hold back. And in that case, insufficient room to get through. car parked on the left so I'm looking well ahead there's a bus coming around the bend so I'm going to prepare to give way here so I'm slowing the car right down and I'm going to hold back a couple of car lengths from the blue car so I've got still got a good view ahead I don't want to get too close to the curb at this point either in case people think I'm parking up so I can now see it's clear for me to continue so the important thing there is to hold well back from the vehicle that's parked on the left so you've got a good view ahead and uh, you don't have to steer so dramatically to get past the vehicle then when it's safe for you to continue. Another bus coming the other way. This time I've got the priority. I'm slowing down anyway just in case he decides to try and come through. He's held back so that's okay for me. The silver car's parked a little bit awkwardly on the bend here. So I'm slowing the car down. Anticipating the red van coming out of the junction. Should be able to time it and keep the car going at this point. So it's all about preparation, reading the road ahead. I'm going to turn right at the T junction. There's a silver car parked on the right, so I'm anticipating somebody coming round the car and into that space. But it's clear at the minute for me to continue. Now you won't be able to see this on camera, but there's a, some vehicles parked on the left here. Uh, which are restricting the view, so I'm waiting for a clear gap on the right, it's a busy main road. Once I've got a gap on the right, I'm going to edge forward to get a better view to the left. You're going to practice this before on your, uh, your T-junctions. 
call it the creep and peak. So I've cleared on my right, I'm just going to edge forward a little bit. And safe on the left as well. And as I come into the new road, I can see there's some warning signs just up ahead. So I've got a sharp bend to the right, and some traffic calming measures, and a school uh, warning sign, so there could be children about. So I'm keeping the pace of the car at such where I'll be able to stop if I need it to. Now I've noticed a busy shopping car park on the left hand side here, so um, no real activity there has caused me any problems. So I'm just keeping the pace of the car again nice and slow as I approach this narrow gap. So no more than 20 25 at this point. You can see there's a zebra crossing coming up as well. The view is a little bit restricted on the left, so I'm slowing down a little bit more until I can see that that's clear. A little bit of oncoming traffic up ahead. Now the road's wide enough for two vehicles to pass safely here. The way the priorities would work is that because the vehicles are parked on the right hand side that would give me the priority. So I'm looking underneath the red car to try and pick up any pedestrian activity ahead of that car. It's safe for me to continue and I'm picking up the warning signs as well. So I have a sharp bend and some uh, 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 warning sign for children. So Putting those two things together, there could be some children crossing the road around the bend, so I'm slowing the car down. I should be able to stop quite easily at this speed if something unexpected happened. Again, a meeting situation, but it's fairly clear for me to continue. I'm anticipating anybody walking out between these vehicles, pedestrians for instance. So behind the skip for instance, there could be a small child about to cross the road, so I'm checking the mirror. Slowing the car down a little bit, just in case. Could be a similar situation with these vehicles parked on the right as well. So I'm going to make a right turn now. So I'm preparing for that, and as I slow the car down, I'm looking at the uh, road ahead. Like I say, there's one or two vehicles coming towards me. So I'll need to be able to judge this right. Looks like I'm going to have to stop. So whilst I'm waiting, I'm looking into the side road on the right. You can see that that's clear, there's no pedestrians crossing the road or anything like that. And I'm now going to pull up back on the left. 